Today, we're talking about the container use MCP server. So a little bit of background, Solomon and Andrea created Docker, and now they're pushing developer environments with a company called Dagger, where they built an MCP server that enables you to run agentic workflows in isolated environments. What a lot of coding agents run into, a limitation they run into right now is background work. What if you want multiple agents, each working in parallel on their own task? just to, you know, to make, to go from one agent that you're babysitting to an, an, a, a whole team. And the blocker there is an isolated environment, because again, without an isolated environment, you can have the largest team in the world. If everyone's changing the same files at the same time, you're actually going to slow each other down and, and ultimately fail. So you could have the smartest agent in the world. It needs its own environment to work in. And that's what container use does. Can we see like this in action? So, um, I'm going to start, uh, I'm in a terminal and, um, I'm in a <clears throat> empty project. Like there's nothing except a readme file that says absolutely nothing. And, um, I've only, uh, Goose installed and I added the, um, container use MCP server to Goose and that's it. I'm just asking Goose to create a simple Flask application. Given that container use is enabled as an MCP server, um, Goose is going to, uh, through container use, is going to create a brand new environment for my task to work in. And that's going to run in a um, containerized environment. So I can see here that it tried to open an environment. And uh, now it's going to plan what it needs to do. It's going to write some files, et cetera, et cetera. So that's going to take a second. The interesting part, which we're going to see in a second, is that uh, it's working a container and it's not touching like my laptop, my local files. So it's entirely uh, sandboxed. Okay. So it completed the task. It's telling me what it did. And the application is now running. It can be accessed here. So if I open uh, this link, basically I can see my app that doesn't do anything except saying hello world. The app itself is running in a container. But the interesting bit is that if I quit uh, Goose, I look around and there's no app. Uh, this is because the app is still like in an environment. So it didn't modify anything in my project. So I can list my environments. And if I look at the logs of this application, I can see the stuff it's been doing inside. Through regular Git tooling, I can actually check out the work. So I can enter the app. My working copy is behind container use by three commits. So I can grab that work that the agent did. And now uh, I can inspect that locally. So I can look at the app file and then see what the agent produced. I actually have Flask because I'm in that environment and it's going to be the exact same Python version and Flask version that the agent was using. So um, the other thing I can do since it's all, uh, all the, the code is stored in Git, I can use the regular tooling and just uh, do a Git log. I can see every operation that the, um, that the agent did. In addition to that, we add, um, we add Git notes, which is extra data attached uh, to the Git commits. And basically I can see uh, all the commands that were run uh, by the agent for debugging purposes. So let's say I'm happy with this work. If I go back on main here, um, I still don't have the app because I can still decide that I don't like it and throw it away. But let's say that I'm happy with that. I can merge um, the work that the agent did and now it's back into my project and I'm going to quickly remove the other work. So this is interesting with, um, you know, one session, but where it really shines is doing parallel work. As we were saying before, the problem that many people run into is when you have two agents, like a team of geese, I guess, working on the same code base and basically stepping each other's foot. So. I'm gonna um, start a Goose session, but actually this time let's start two Goose sessions at once. I uh, hope this is clear, but I have two terminals, top and bottom, two Goose sessions, and my prompt is gonna be make this app prettier. I like a red background, and I'm gonna do the same below, but with a blue background. And I'm gonna start both sessions at once. So now they're all working together. 
uh, have a third terminal here. We don't really care about seeing what's going on, but there's uh, some utility commands. Like for instance, I have uh, CU watch to be able to watch a working live. So um, right now uh, there's still, so this basically all get based. And in a second, yeah, I should see like one environment popping here and another one here. So you can see one agent creating one index.html and the other one, uh, one. So you can see like uh, the environment names are, are random for now, but uh, Central Redbird and Fleet Horse, but they're all uh, working. Uh, in the same code base, actually writing the same files, like they're creating the same index file, but one is gonna be red and the other one blue, but they are not stepping on each other's code. So, um now it's done and i can see the top terminal is going to be the red version and the bottom terminal is actually the blue version so all these are running as separate environments on my laptop and they wrote into the same files and let's say i prefer the blue one it, it looks better so blue one is the bottom one i'm gonna quit both actually both i still don't have a um an index file here, but I can see the um, the environments. And let's say that I prefer the uh, red one. I can um, basically decide to pick this one and that's it. Now the changes made by that version of the agent are back into my project and I can just go on and delete the other one because I happen not to like the, the blue background and done. And so I had two agents basically working the same base, making code base, making conflicting changes and be able to pick the one I preferred. Uh, this can also be useful if you know, you're running multiple experiments and the model starts hallucinating. It didn't change any of the files on your laptop and you can decide to throw that away and start over. And that's it for a quick intro on container use. There's, there's a lot more into that, like we support running uh, containerized services. And uh, like, for instance, if you want to provide a database, like a Postgres to your coding agent, then each boost session will get its own version of that. So they can even make uh, database updates without, you know, conflicting. And, and th there's a lot more. It's still very early stage, but it's advancing very fast. That was so cool. Like my mind is blown. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Like you can, you, if you open a whole bunch of terminal windows, it feels like my robot army. Some, something like Goose had had to exist. You know, there's a lot of it's it's there's a lot of AI tools. It's very crowded. There's a, a million options, but there's always usually there's strings attached. You know, um, like it's either not open source or it, it only works with this model or it only works with this IDE or you know with this hosted um this cloud service and i like that you it's it's well defined it's it's decoupled it's just sort of an obvious tool to exist you know you all seem to really be embracing the idea of ai agents even the future of them working in the background and even embracing mcp model context protocol but as i've talked to other engineers and either just technologists they're really skeptical about MCP or they're even underwhelmed about MCP. I'm curious, like, why do you all feel like it's worth investing like time and effort? Why is it, why is MCP something that you think matters? I mean, I'll share my, my perspective. Um, the, the, the valuable part with MCP is not the, the design details of the spec. I mean, you could, you could argue over technical decisions all day, like any other design. The important thing is people use it. That, you know, people have agreed on something for once. They've agreed on using that. And so it's not perfect and it's it's not the, the solution to everything. And of course, there's a lot of hype. So you're going to hear people saying it's the solution to everything and it's not. But that's that's an unrealistic bar to set anyway. It, you know, it allowed us to integrate with Goose with, you know, easily. There was initial efforts to get MCP to work, but now that we've put in the work, we get compatibility, not just with Goose, 
but with all the other MCB clients out there, right? So that's valuable for us. And on the other side for, for, for Goose, it's valuable that it can, you know, it's compatible with container use, but also with all the other MCP servers out there. So that's really it. You know, people agreed to use it. It works well enough and that's it. You know, and then you, you, we got a standard for this and then we move on and we build cool products, you know. It fills a gap. It's <clears throat> interesting. Like we, we're talking about MCP as if, you know, it's been existing forever, but it's like six, six months old, seven months old. And, and, and way back then, <laughs> so late last year, like before this existed, like the, um, we were in a situation where like for every single model, for every single agent, like we had to write custom tools. Like we had to use, like if you wanted to expose tooling for LangGraph, we would have had to write them in Python using that framework and continue to use. Well, without MCP could not have, I mean, it could have existed, but it would have been, you know, a ton of work for every single agent out there. So I think, you know, it's not perfect, but the alternative of not having it is, is much worse. And I think it's filling that gap. And as Sam was saying, like the, the most important part is that people can agree to use it because otherwise, you know, a standard that's not used, it's, it's not very useful. To, to give a very concrete example, this, this capability that we showed you of, of running, running agents in different environments. If MCP did not exist, we could not have detached it from the rest of the agent. We would basically to, to share this with developers, we would have been forced to bundle it with an agent of our own. And basically we would be out there, um, like building some alternative to, to goose basically with this extra feature, but um, not that competition is not good, but that's not where we want to focus our time. You know, we want to contribute something unique and then get as many users as possible for it. I love both of y'all's reasoning and examples. Are there any last things you all want to mention about container use or MCP or Goose uh, before we go? We have a Discord. You should join it. It's on the, it's the Dagger Discord. And, um... Yeah, it's all open source. You should check out the container use repo and and um, try it out. If you have issues, please open an open an issue. Uh, share feedback. We love to develop in the open. We crave the feedback, especially the negative feedback. So, if you're interested in parallel work for coding agents, um, yeah, let us know how it goes. I want to say thank you again to Solomon and Andrea for joining us. It's really rare to see or chat with people who've like reshaped software or how we build software twice. If you're into developer of tools that push the envelope, please subscribe for more.